This is 2015's Babysitter's Block Book. Warning, spoilers ahead. This story was inspired by true events. We open up to girls playing on a playground, and one of them records the others while they swing on the swing set. Eventually, the school bell goes off, and we watch as Ashley stumbles into class late. Once inside, the teacher calls her up to the front to show off her class project. Ashley shows a slideshow that promotes a business plan that she made up for her babysitting and tutoring jobs. Ashley explains that business is so booming that there are 11 other girls that work with her. And she introduces us to her three best friends that are also her top three performers. In fact, when the teacher tells her to think of other services she can provide, Ashley just gives her a funny look. Would you look at that? A babysitting story with a huge sex scandal. This sounds familiar. What's even crazier is the fact that this one's based on a true story too. Stop hiring babysitters if you're only gonna get in trouble. After class, Ashley talks to the girls about her entrance to college, and it turns out that most of the girls are focused on their sexual escapades. Ashley's the only one that doesn't participate in that, and she's waiting for someone special to come along. Just then, Daniel shows up with some other guys, and he walks right up to Ashley. The two of them talk about school, and Ashley tells him that she'll keep helping him with chemistry and geometry. Daniel tries to set up something for tonight, but she's busy with babysitting. That evening, Ashley answers the phone for the babysitting service, and she confirms an appointment for Lois. When she eats dinner with her family, she finds out that her mother is going to have to close the store she owns, and they're going to have to tap into her college fund to keep things going. Ashley's devastated by the idea of going to a community college, and she can't believe that she's worked so hard to go to a top-of-the-line school just to have it ripped out from underneath her. Ashley storms out of the house, and she heads over to her next babysitting job. Eventually, Mark and Linda get home, and they give Ashley a little present that they picked up. She loves the present, but suddenly Linda asks about her college entrance applications. When Ashley talks about how much she's overwhelmed by them, Linda mentions that Mark can help her with them, and he assures her that they aren't as bad as they seem. That evening, Janet finds out that Rachel is getting paid to get it on with their customers, and she thinks she might want in on that money. Meanwhile, Ashley is having a mini breakdown while waiting for Mark and Linda to come home, and she literally says everything she should say to her parents to them instead. Then Linda pulls the babysitting cardinal sin. She tells Mark to drive Ashley home since it starts raining. That's a guaranteed way to make sure something happens. Rookie mistake. While Mark and Ashley talk about her options in the truck, he tells her that everything will be okay in the end. And he tells her that he'll pull some strings to make sure she can go to a good school. He calls it an investment in her future, and she leaps into the driver's seat to give him a hug. Then this dude gives her a simple kiss and acts like nothing just happened. Like he kisses anyone that he wants to help a little bit. What is that a courtesy I didn't know about? Later, Daniel and Ashley meet up to have a tutoring session, but she almost leaves after listening to him tell his girlfriend that Ashley isn't anything to worry about. He convinces her to stay by calling for pizza, and she tells him her new idea for going to Pressman, which was Mark's school. The next night, she goes to Mark's house to work on applications, and she finds out that Linda and the kids are out of the house for the night. Mark talks to her about taking her to a college tour, and he offers to put her up for the weekend in a hotel with him. Is this not a red flag for anyone else here? How casual Mark is is what makes it even worse to me. Mark acts like he does this every other night. Elsewhere, it looks as though Ashley's babysitting business is taking its next steps to being a certified illegal venture. That weekend, Ashley comes over for a family pool day, and she talks to Linda about guys. At school on Monday, Ashley finds out that she came in first for her class, and she celebrates with her friends at lunch. They talk about meeting up that weekend to celebrate, but Ashley tells them that she's got a college tour to go to. When the weekend comes around, Ashley goes to Pressman with Mark, and he shows her around the grounds. Then Ashley mentions a band that's playing that night, and Mark tells her that he'll push their flights later and take her. How far is Ashley going to fall down the rabbit hole? Is she going to keep Mark as a sugar daddy kind of thing, or is he going to take things too far with her? He's even buying her gorgeous dresses with slits that go all the way up to her thigh. She's still in high school, and he's taking her to a college city concert. What is this? Back in town, it seems as though Rachel and Janet are booking even bigger jobs, but Ashley's swimming with Mark and getting closer than ever. When they go to the concert, Ashley can't help but have a good time, but Mark knows what he's doing, especially when a slow song comes on and he takes her out onto the dance floor. The two of them start kissing and they definitely get carried away with it. Mark takes her out of the bar and they go right back to the hotel where he takes her into the room. The two of them get it on and afterwards, Ashley lays in bed and thinks about what happened. Ashley talks about how she can't believe they did that, and she feels like she's betraying Linda. Mark keeps telling her to stop worrying about things, and he tells her that he'll take care of her room and board and tuition since she's his girl now. Wow, it's amazing how quickly he thought he could just claim her. That's all it takes to get a full ride to a prestigious college? I definitely went about things a different way. What's sad is when Ashley goes back to school, she sees Rachel and Janet with their new merchandise, 
and poor Jilly's left out of everything. After finding out Rachel and Janet's secret, they go to the park to talk about their moral high grounds. Jilly can't believe that they're selling themselves out for some money, but Rachel and Janet are sure that this is worth it in the end. They try to recruit Ashley, but they don't know that she's got her own thing going. When Ashley goes to meet Mark at his office, she tells him that she can't get the thought of Linda and the kids out of her head, but Mark reminds her that she's got a lot on the line. After Mark holds the tuition over her head, Ashley strips down and makes him prove how much he adores her. This is his office! Are there not other workers on the other side of the frosted windows? Mark is way too confident and cocky with this. When people get too comfortable, they slip up. Later, Ashley meets up with Daniel for more tutoring, but he all of a sudden is too preoccupied with her beauty. Ashley begins to enjoy the attention, and she agrees to go to a high school party with him. Once there, Ashley enjoys herself and later, Daniel drops her off at her house while they hold each other and kiss. The next morning, Ashley wakes up to find flowers and a note from Mark that says he missed her last night. Suddenly, Ashley runs into her mom, and she has to tell her that the flowers are from Daniel. That night, Ashley meets up with Mark, and he asks her about where she was the night before. Mark starts asking her if she did it with anyone else, and he points out that he's basically in charge of her since he's paying for her college and housing. Ashley finally does the smart thing here. She essentially throws her free ride in order to keep some sense of freedom. You go, girl. The next day, Ashley hangs out with her friends by the pool, and Ashley and Jilly look at the money Rachel and Janet are throwing around. Jilly actually ends up joining the club because she needs money for her photography sessions, and Ashley gets a call from Pressman about her upcoming interview. Things seem to be looking up for everyone. Later, Ashley tries to get advice on what to wear for her interview from her mom, and her mother tries to make her understand that she really wants what's best for her. Ashley heads to her interview, and she finds out that the alumni interviewer thinks that she's the perfect fit for the school. When she tells her that tuition is over $50,000 a year, Ashley realizes that she has to figure something out. That evening, Ashley gets a blackmail text from Mark, and she agrees to meet him so he doesn't tell her parents. Mark ends up kissing her at the restaurant, and Rachel spots her at the bar while she's working her mark. When they go to Ashley's house later, Rachel makes Ashley drop the holy act, and she tells her that she needs to get serious about making her own money like she does instead of relying on someone like Mark. The next day, Ashley runs into Linda on the street, and she tells her that she wants her to come back into the family's lives. Ashley agrees to help tutor the kids again, and she heads to school. Rachel tells all of them that she has a whole bunch of dads that are ready to spend $1,000 for each of the girls for the weekend, and Ashley agrees to participate. It eventually ends up being a pretty busy weekend, and Ashley seems to be in high demand. Eventually, Jilly leaves out of shame, but Ashley goes through with it. By Monday, the girls act like they didn't just have the dirtiest weekend of their life. I couldn't imagine just forgetting all of it like it never happened. They definitely just made a thousand each, and that's crazy for a high schooler. What's even better is that Mark tells Linda that he wants her to take care of the kids more to let Ashley go. That doesn't look suspicious at all. Also, that's a terrible way to say something like that to someone like Linda. That evening, Ashley goes to tutor Daniel, but they can't keep their hands off of each other. Ashley feels like it's a bad time to start something, but Daniel tells her that he's not giving up. Later, Ashley answers some of the calls for the business, and she gets an emergency text from Rachel talking about an emergency with Janet. When she gets there, she finds out that Janet is actually pregnant. After discussing their options, Janet goes to the hospital with Ashley and Jilly, and later, it becomes clear that all Rachel cares about is making money with the guys. After their talk, Ashley gets cornered by Harper in the hallway, and she finds out that she's mad about losing her spot at Pressman. The most pathetic little catfight happens on the stairs, but Jilly isn't messing around. Jilly was ready to throw her bag down and make sure Harper didn't make it to see her freshman year of college, period. That evening, Ashley figures out that she still needs about twelve and a half thousand dollars and she realizes that her only solution is Rachel and the business. Ashley goes to a client later to take some dirty pictures, but when another girl pops up, she ends up leaving. Ashley goes to tell Rachel about what happened, and she tells her that she just can't go forward with the dirty life. Rachel says she understands, and she tells Ashley to just keep her mouth shut. At school, Ashley and Harper get honored for being top of the class, and Ashley spots that Harper's uncle is actually the man that was taking her pictures. Harper comes out to talk to Ashley about withdrawing from Pressman so that she'll keep her mouth shut about her dirty escapades. Harper might be one of the only ones that can do this whole blackmailing thing right. Not only does she threaten it, she leaks it to the paper. Harper not only pulls out these awesome threats, but she's got the balls to follow through. News gets out to all of the school, and even Mark and Linda see the article. Linda tells him that he needs to come home, and she asks if he had anything to do with Ashley. Of course, he tries to put the blame on Linda and Ashley, but she's done with him. Linda throws him out of the house, and she tells him to stay away from their children. At school, Ashley and the others get ridiculed for everything, and Daniel even calls Ashley out for her dirty secret. That evening, Ashley gets home and has to answer questions from her own parents now. Ashley tells them about Mark, and she mentions Harper's uncle as well. 
Ashley knows that things are only going to get worse. The next morning, Ashley finds signs in her yard and presses at the school. Of course, Rachel's only worried about her own name getting dragged into this because this mess of Harper wanting her pressman slot. I will say, the principal is the only one that seems to be on their side. He tells them that he's not going to do what everyone wants them to do unless there's evidence. Finally, one person. Rachel actually admits to being the mastermind behind everything, and the girls get taken to the police now. All except for Jillian. Once Ashley gets taken back from interrogation, Ashley admits to everything, and Mark ends up getting arrested in his own home. When it comes time for Rachel's interrogation, she agrees to admit to everything, and she opens up about how she was surprised that she never worried about getting caught. The DA has the detective place Rachel under arrest, but she gets to tell her friends goodbye before going to jail. Suddenly, Ashley spots Linda in the police station, and Mark tries to work a deal with the DA. The DA isn't going to be swayed though, and she tells him that he and other men have to register as sex offenders, take a parenting class, and go to sex addiction meetings, or they'll go to jail for 10 years. I just send him to jail. But from Mark's side, I wouldn't be arguing those terms. He's definitely not in a position to negotiate. When Ashley talks to Linda, Linda tells her that she knows she didn't mean to hurt the family, but she knows that all of this will end everything for everyone. Linda hates what Mark took from Ashley, and she's going to divorce him immediately. When Ashley goes back to the school, she finds out that she's not going to Pressman anymore, and she hears that Harper took her place instead. Is she really surprised? Did she think that anyone would even think of turning a blind eye to what just went down? I don't think so. She's lucky to essentially go free without so much as a slap on the wrist. That evening, Ashley's dad is steaming about the men being able to go free, but Ashley assures them that all of this is going the best possible way considering the alternative route. Her parents remind her that they'll love her no matter what, and that she'll always have them. After some time, Janet and Ashley go to visit Rachel in jail, and they bring their graduation ceremony to her. Eight months later, we see that Ashley is working at a deli in town, and she's going to community college. One day, Jilly comes in, and she updates Ashley on how her life is going at art school. Ashley is so happy that Jilly backed out of everything before it went too far for her, and the two of them say goodbye. Suddenly, Daniel shows up, and then the credits roll. This stuff actually happens. At least the movie wasn't bad though. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.